We're at one centre-left party running in the European elections in this country are the Greens. Their platform, a pledge to fight both Brexit and climate change. Is that a message that can gain widespread traction? I'm joined now by Molly Scott Cato, Green MEP for the southwest of England and Gibraltar. Thanks very much for joining us. Just picking up first uh, on Mark Urban's film. Now, the, the Greens first came to national prominence in Germany. And now, as you saw there, in places like the Ruhr and so forth, where, you know, the, the left behinds in deindustrialization are not looking to environmental issues. That's the kind of preserve of the well-off, the liberals. They need something different. Oh, I don't think that's right at all. I mean, some of the biggest unions in Germany are now supporting the Greens, for example, the steel union, because most of the steel is now being used in wind turbines. But I think the reason that the Greens are doing so well in Germany, 20%, for example, in, in Germany and, and in other northern European countries, is because we do have the message about the future. People know that environmental crisis is with us, we need to address climate change, and they trust I, us to have the right policies. But here, of course, you know, the environment has never been, as it were, a hotter topic. And yet the political energy is with the Brexit party. Well, I think there is a lot of political energy coming us to us as well. If you look at the local election results, we have three times as many councillors in my region as we had before mm. the local elections. We're taking councillors from left and right, and we're, you know, we're really forging ahead right across the region. So we have a lot of energy because climate's rising up the agenda and people recognise that we have the policies But where to you are in it. the polls for the European elections is the same place you were in the polls last time around, and the, and the vote is in just one week's time. You haven't made that headway with all the farrago that's going on now, you haven't been able to capitalise on that. Because your attitude, I suppose, to the European Union is one way ambivalent. You're, you, know, you, you want to stay in the European Union, but you're incredibly critical. And yet you haven't been able to reform. Well, I, I think that's what makes our party the most effective party because we're very pro-European, we're pro-Remain, we want to stay in the European Union. But at the same time, we're a critical friend. We're prepared to criticise, for example, trying to weaken the power of the lobby, trying to get more power for the Parliament. So in a, in a way, I think we are the future for Europe because we are pro-European but prepared to change Europe. But the trouble is you may be prepared to change Europe, but on past uh, evidence... The European project isn't prepared to change. You know, look, you know, David Cameron went to try and get change and came back with very little. You know, it's it's like some kind of great juggernaut, and that is what people object to. That actually it is does appear to be unreformable, and the Greens are not the people to be able to do that. That's really not what I see sitting in the European Parliament. I mean, I've worked mainly on tax for the past five years. Greens have led on the need to stop corporations avoiding paying their tax, on changing the way we do farming. I've led on sustainable finance. So. On all the major issues of the time, Greens lead and then others follow. But the Greens haven't been able to make common cause with the other parties for Remain. You're not being able to take people with you. Why not? Why, hasn't, why haven't you been able to come together with other parties of Remain? Well, I think some of the parties that say we should be cooperating with them are actually, they, they may say that, but what they actually want to do is displace us and they're asking us to stand aside. And I've had people, even though I'm the only MEP for a Remain party that's actually standing for re-election in the South West, I've had people from the Liberal Democrats saying I should stand aside. And I really think that's a little bit cheeky, you know, and I definitely won't be doing that. And we're all standing for different things. And actually, if you, if you get too involved in tactical voting in these elections, it can be quite counterproductive. They're proportional elections. People can feel quite free to vote for what they believe in, and for lots of people, that is the Greens. A poll today showed we are the most popular party, 9% approval rating, Lib Dems minus 15%, Labour minus 35%. Thank you very much indeed.